Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the next episode in our Nightmare Difficulty playthrough from the Curse of the Vampire DLC expansion. As you can see, we are deep inside Castle Hela. As a matter of fact, we are just about to waltz into the throne room and confront her and, well, the boss fight that immediately ensues after that. But real quick before we do, make sure you check to see if you are subscribed to the channel. If you're not, go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button. That greatly helps me out. And uh, as always, feel free to leave a like on today's episode if you found it helpful, interesting, or enjoyable. So let's go ahead and have our confrontation with Hela. And then Surtur appears and smashes the throne and uh, makes quite the entrance here. So... What I think is going to be best for us here is to just kind of layer into Surtur as best we can. It doesn't appear that he has any curses active, which I'm very grateful for because I don't know that I would want to deal with a boss of his caliber with a curse active. Oh boy, he really stands tall and loud and proud. And it's just a little bit terrifying. It's interesting the attacks that he does throughout, though, with uh, just kind of how he conducts himself. Now, we are actually decently safe from these assaults over here in the corner. So let's see if this does anything to him. Uh, little to nothing. Good to know. And then let's get our extreme attacks online. See how much damage we can layer into him here. And we should actually be able to one-cycle him here. Nice. That's always a good thing to see when we can one-cycle a tricky boss character. Surtur gave me a real run for my money the first time that I interacted with him. He's uh, he's the skill check boss character towards the end of the game, that's for sure. And now we've got the cannon assault coming down on the Bifrost here. And it looks like we are plummeting forward rather than gracefully progressing down the line and now got ourselves a wonderful combat section I'm gonna go ahead and lay our gravity surge ability right here in the center kind of draw all of these opponents back up into it as that will do quite well for us and then this is another one of those tricky areas where you want to make sure that you're checking for any secrets uh, that might come available because a lot of things can kind of be tucked away in weird corners. Looks like there's just a couple of benches here. Nothing super special. And doesn't look like any of these Hydra Warriors have curses active either, though I don't expect that theme to continue. I'm wholly expecting additional characters to show up that do indeed have curses active. And let's draw these guys in here. Looks like we've done decently well on that front. And then drawing these characters in over here, we should actually get them, 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 them out with a swift little rocket shot, provided that we actually hit them. There we go. Don't know why it took as long as it did. And then there is one other guy hanging out back here. Now, you probably noticed just a moment or two ago that there is a rare box hanging out right over here. And it's on the back side of this main statue. It was right here. It appears that we did actually break it with a couple of the attacks that we were throwing out, but that is a location of 
a rare box that you'll want to make sure that you grab as it's one of the easier ones to miss of the overall adventure here. And a lot of staggers going on in there. And uh, we were able to take those guys out very easily as well. And then I think this is the last mandatory combat section that takes place right up here. So let's grab them. There's a couple of artifacts over here in boxes that you can break down. But nothing else super noteworthy. See, you say heroes, but uh, you are actively ignoring the fact that we've got Thanos Infinite on our team here. Now, I don't have to stop and fight these guys, as that was, this section was entirely optional. But, nope, nothing else back here. It almost looked for a moment that there was a rare box right there. And just doing my once around scan, making sure there's nothing else that I've missed. Nope, we are good to progress down into the uh, lower tunnels of Asgard. And there's nothing hidden back here either. But as soon as we get through this door, there is a synergy wall on our immediate left. And this one's a little bit harder to see, especially if you don't know what you're looking for. And just like that, we've been able to break through it. And we've got this section taken down. Nice, uh, decently strong piece of ISO right there. So not going to complain. This is generally where you find the rift. Though, of course, the rifts have been omitted from the Nightmare difficulty. So you're not going to find it there. But there are a couple of them that are hidden a little bit lower down here in these catacombs that you'll want to take note of. And I believe there's one in these holding cells, if I'm not mistaken. Or if there's not a rare box located in these holding cells, you do get a gift from triggering this terminal with the Asgard warriors here. And from a speedrun standpoint, it's generally glossed over, and that's uh, just because it's not really worth your time. You really want to blitz through it, but yes, you can see in here there is a rare box that we can grab, so we can interact with this terminal. And this one is actually unique because we are given both a a gift from the opponents that we've, or the allies that we've freed, as well as the rewards from within the chest or the rare box. So, kind of a two-sided win at that point. And then there's just one more guy that we've got to beat down here. And then before we move on down that hallway where Loki is freed up, there is one more rare box that's housed just down here. This one is going to be the Daredevil Synergy. And just like that, we have that synergy wall broken down and another piece of red ISO contained within there. And then here is where we have the cutscene with Loki, which we can actively ignore once we have freed him. And before we check into the next round of combat here, uh, I don't think that there are any boxes in any of these holding cells but you can never be too cautious. I don't even know that you can run into the one that he came out of. No, you can't. But it's always worth checking to see if that is the case. Looks like we have a cursed enemy present, and I don't see anything else flashing around here. So that is interesting. I figured that we would have seen other enemies and it looks like that guy was actually revived in as an ice guy or I just completely glossed over him as we were looking at his abilities. Now let's get the conversation with Loki out of the way there. Nothing else important into this room but in this next area, the storeroom, you can see that there's a rare box up here 
and it is on the other side of these scaffoldings. And it looks like I don't have any other room for ISO, but that would have had an ISO brick available to us, but I don't mind. Now we can progress in through this little staircase, and there's nothing else of note up here, just a couple of uh, racks and a storeroom that you can break if you're feeling into that, but it's not necessary. And then we've got ourselves a couple of small opponents right here that we'll want to break down, take them out of the picture, and then move along through this laser gate. That's an easier laser gate to navigate. This one is pretty simple as well, providing that you don't get locked behind that cauldron. We can just zip through like so. We can then attempt to jump through that and uh, fail. Zip through this one, have more success with that. Jump through this. And then I've personally found that teleportation tends to work a little bit better in getting through some of these, uh, though that's not always the case. And then there's a synergy wall over here that looks like we'll need crystal. And maybe she can make it through this time? Nope, she can't. Wow, okay. There we are. Sometimes you have to play around with her a bit funny in order to get that to work. But there we are. Synergy wall broken here. Rare box available to us there. Looks like there was more ISO in there. From the glitter effect, it looks like it was probably a blue piece of ISO. But let's get our gravity set up here. So we can combat this other guy's gravity that's stuck in the middle of ours. And then get away from the explosion that's going to happen right there, or at least it looked like there was. There was. And then we have our last mandatory combat section before the Red Skull fight. And let's layer in the gravity surge there. Got all these guys pulled in so we can take them out with relative ease. Looks like there was a cursed member that went down, as you saw with the white fog effect that emanated out to kind of purify that effect as we cleared it out. And then two cursed enemies right here. But that ought to be the end of them. And I can never tell if they uh, always revive, because I know in some of the smaller quests they do, uh, they actually may have revived into just standard enemies. And then with that explosion, we have the last opponent taken down, and we can continue into the throne room of Asgard, as opposed to the throne room of Hell. Have the confrontation with Red Skull and Hela. Now, Red Skull is just kind of a laughing stock of a boss, because look how fast he goes down. Uh, I mean, he is he is very much the glass cannon uh, opponent. He hits decently hard, but cannot take a hit to save his life. Except for when he's buffed up with the ISO here. He tends to do a little bit better with that. Let's see if we can just stagger him out right with this. Ooh, that did work. And he can be staggered despite uh, not having that gauge, and that was a very imprudent detonation there. Sometimes I do that when my fingers are lingering on the roll trigger, which is just kind of unfortunate that that can happen. I try not to do it in the speedruns, but I get a little careless when I'm in these other fights. Ooh, the destroyer armor with a gravity surge. That is uh, devastating, especially with 
these large scale attacks that he throws out. And the Daredevil was a little too far out, a little too far away to have that be efficient at all. But we can draw in the remainder of these guys. And we actually might be able to just detonate our extreme attack with Thanos here to finish off this fight. Oh, it did work. And there we are with a couple of synergy attacks there. Using crystal we have the destroyer armor taken down as well. Now, Odin comes into the picture, he gives us a lecture that we will elect to ignore. And before we move out of here, there is a matter of business with some of these store boxes. You saw that that large one up there, it gave us that purple effect. There's a lot of uh, goodies just kind of hanging out in some of these boxes around here. I don't think these are all rare boxes. Uh, but some of them certainly do have some nicer rewards hidden inside. So you don't want to gloss over them. There's another rare box up there that gave us some nice little rewards. And then, yeah, a lot of really nice stuff in here. So I will load up the next area. And that's where we will get what will possibly be the last chapter in this in, uh, in this game mode difficulty, but we will have to see where that leads us. But I'll go ahead and take care of that off camera, and we will meet you for the next episode from that location. So thanks again for your time, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day.